Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create colorful images of the Milky Way and bring out those nice reddish and pinkish colors of the emission nebula that lights somewhere around the Milky Way core, and all of that using an unmodified stock DSLR or mirrorless camera with a clever use of a narrowband H-alpha hydrogen alpha filter that I have right here. So for the longest time I have been wondering how all those people online come up with those really really colorful images of the Milky Way, whereas my images are very detailed but they are lacking this kind of a color and punch to it and the answer seems to be modifying your camera for astrophotography because a modified camera picks up a lot more of these reddish colors, those colors that are present in those emission nebula and stock cameras are just not very sensitive to that kind of light. They are not completely blind to this kind of light but they are just very insensitive. So if you are taking a shot of a wide shot of the Milky Way that light from those emission nebula just gets lost in the abundance of other kinds of wavelengths of light and also light pollution and that kind of stuff. So if only I could find a way to isolate this hydrogen alpha light, this kind of light that is very abundant in those emission nebula, if I can isolate this with my unmodified camera and then add it to my RGB photos taken with my unmodified camera, that way I could bring out those colors, right? And that's where the hydrogen alpha narrowband filter comes into play. The filter that I have right here is made by a German company, Astronomy. This is a very well respected and well known manufacturer of camera filters. And this is a narrow band 12 nanometers wide, so this is the width of the band that it passes. In the middle of this band is the hydrogen alpha wavelength of light and this filter is mainly designed to be used for deep sky astrophotography with modified cameras so you can isolate those emission nebula light and really get rid of all of the light pollution etc. You can create narrowband images that look stunning and this is the main purpose of this filter. But we can actually make use of that as well for our Milky Way photography even with an unmodified camera. This filter is very easy to use. It's a clip-in filter so you can just install it in between the camera sensor and and the lens and that way you can use it with any lens even with lenses with bulbous front elements very very convenient so in order to take the necessary shots you just need to set up your camera and take a couple of normal regular photos without the filter installed those will be our colorful rgb exposures that we will then stack together and merge with the light captured with the h alpha filter installed so after you're done taking your rgb photos you need to install the filter keep the tracker running so you are pointed at the exact same portion of the sky so it is easy to align it later on then install the filter and take a couple of shots by capturing only the H alpha emission nebula light. But bear in mind that if you install this filter into an unmodified camera, you are going to be picking up very, very little light. So you definitely need some kind of a tracker for instance, the Skywatcher Star Adventure. And by the way, I have a bunch of videos on my channel if you don't know me about this tracker so you can learn all about it. I will put some links on the end screen of this video. So we will need to pump up the exposure time really, really high, couple of minutes in order to be able to capture anything with the H-alpha filter installed in an unmodified camera. And also bear in mind that in order to install a clip-in filter, you actually need to take off your lens. And if you take off your lens, chances are that you're going to lose focus. So you will need to re focus again on the stars with the filter installed. And this is where the first problem comes into play because the camera is picking up very very little light, you are not going to be able to see anything in live view. When I was trying to focus with my f2.8 lens I didn't see anything, absolutely any star at all. So I had to resort to focusing on some distant street light and only that way I was able to actually focus. So then in post-production you are going to need to first align all of these exposures to a single reference frame. And if you're using Pixie and Sight like me, you just need to go to the star alignment module and make sure that you align all of those exposures, both the RGB exposures and the H alpha exposures to the same reference image. And the reference image optimally would be one of the sharpest of your RGB shots in order to align everything to it. And bear in mind that if you do the alignment of the H-alpha exposures, typically this is what I run into in Pixar Insight myself, it wasn't actually able to detect enough stars to do the alignment, so you're going to need to tweak some parameters in the star detection section right here in the star alignment in order for this uh, process to work successfully, but after tweaking some parameters it did, so there's no problem in that. Just bear in mind that you might run into some issues there. 
Then you need to create two separate stacks. You need to create one stack for all of the RGB images and a second stack for all of the H alpha exposures. And here is another caveat, because if you're doing an integration of just your RGB images, you can just do that and no problem. But if you are doing it with the H alpha exposures, there is actually something to be aware of because normally when you load up your raw images from a color camera into Pix Inside, they are going to be debayered by default. And what that means is that in most of the cameras that are capturing colorful images, there is a color filter array that is in front of the camera sensor. And the color filter array is arranged in a way that your camera is able to capture red, green, and blue channels at the same time. And then the process called debayering or demosaicing needs to be run either by your camera or by your raw conversion software in order to create actual colorful image. And the debayering is just for the name of the Bayer array, which is the most common array of the color filter array, which comes from the last name of some German guy that worked in Kodak. But long story short, if you're doing that with your H alpha exposures, you actually don't need to do any kind of debayering. And that is because we know that all of the light that we are capturing with the H alpha filter installed is going to be red light because 656 nanometers and the 12 nanometer wide band is definitely going to be red. So we don't need to debayer those images. We can just treat all of those images as monochrome images, take everything that your camera collected, create a stack out of that. And then after that, we are going to be combining it with the RGB images. So make sure to turn off the bearing if you're working with those images with the H alpha filter installed. And then to do the actual combining in PixInsight, again, this is very easy. You just need to use the pixel math module, and then you are going to write an expression for RG and B channels separately. Take the data from the red channel from the RGB stack and add to it all the data from the H alpha monochrome stack. And then for the green and blue channels, just take the data from the green channel and the blue channel of the RGB stack respectively. And then if you run this, you are going to end up with an image that looks like this. It has a slightly reddish cast, but you can easily combat this by using a dynamic background extractor in PixInsight, which does a phenomenal job. If you don't have PixInsight or you don't want to work in PixInsight and you're more familiar with Photoshop, you can totally do that in Photoshop as well. But this is going to be a little bit more cumbersome because you are going to need to copy all of those separate RG and B channels from the H alpha stack into three different monochrome documents in Photoshop. Then you are going to need to duplicate those layers and have them all in the same monochrome document. Then also duplicate the red channel data from the RGB stack into that, combine all of that, just add them using a linear dodge blending mode, and then flatten all of that and copy that to the red channel of your RGB stack. And then with a little bit of tweaking of this image and blending my foreground, this is the final image that I came up with using this technique. As you can see clearly, the colors of Emission Nebula, like right here, Lagoon, Triffid, Eagle, and Omega, are clearly visible in this image. And also around this star, as you can see, there is this reddish glow. And none of that is present on the image of the sky that I have taken without the use of these H alpha exposures. So with an unmodified camera, we just cannot simply pick up this kind of light, but using this H alpha combining technique, you can totally bring it out in your final photo. So now the question remains whether this is actually a viable and sustainable option to take images of the Milky Way without modifying your camera. So I also wanted to compare how this result using the H alpha RGB combination technique would step against taking a shot of the Milky Way with an actually astro-modified camera. So I had an astro-modified camera with me that night, and this is how the image turned out to be from that camera. And as you can see, of course, we are seeing the colors of the nebula, but also the Milky Way itself is just way, way more colorful. And honestly, it doesn't even compare to the result using the H-alpha RGB combination technique with an unmodified camera. So what is the conclusion here? So if you don't want to modify your camera, because I don't know if you are aware, but modifying your camera for astrophotography is not a trivial thing. It involves an actual physical removal of a filter that is stuck against your camera sensor. And in order to do that, you need to disassemble the entire camera, take out the filter, assemble the camera again, which means that you are going to lose your warranty. And also if you do that, there is no going back because the IR cut filter oftentimes gets broken in this process. 
so you cannot just put it back again if you want to. And also, if you want to keep using your camera for daytime, like photography or videography, you are going to have some problems with white balance, because all of the presets of the white balance are just not going to work, and also the automatic white balance is not going to give you good results. In order to use a Astro modified camera for daytime photography or filmmaking, you are going to need to use custom white balances in order to combat the reddish cast that will show up on your images otherwise. So modifying your camera is definitely something that is scary to do and I understand that some people might not want to do it. So if you want to step up your Milky Way game but you are not yet in the territory of actually astro modifying your camera, you just want to make your images of the Milky Way a little bit richer in those colors without modifying your camera, then maybe using an H-alpha filter and the technique that I described in this video could be a viable option. And then if you decide that you actually want to modify your camera because you want to use it for deep sky photography, or maybe you just want more colors in the Milky Way, then you can also use the hydrogen alpha filter and shoot deep sky objects even under full moon and light polluted skies in Bortle 9 or something. This is how good good narrowband imaging is with a filter like an H-alpha from Astronomic. So that's basically it for me for this video. If you liked it, make sure to leave it a thumbs up down below, I would really appreciate it. And also if you want to pick up the hydrogen alpha filter or check out any of the other gear that I use to take those shots that you have just seen, head over to the description of this video where you will find links to all of those products. And also while you are there, consider subscribing to my channel because I will be posting a lot more astrophotography content in the future and I already have a bunch of interesting videos on my channel so you can for instance check out these two in the meantime and I hope to see you in my next video clear skies and bye bye